Welcome to Be A Voice. This is Rick Carpenter on Usula Media. Thanks for joining me today. I'm really stoked for today's show because I am sitting here with somebody that I've been following for quite some time and I've never had the uh, pleasure of meeting personally, but since this person is associated with some of the people out there that I like pretty much in this city and what they do, I was really excited to have on the show today. I am sitting here with the morning co-anchor of PHL 17 Morning Show, Amanda Van Allen. Hi, Amanda. Hi, good morning. How good are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm a little sleepy. I was going to say, you, you were so chipper there. Good morning. I'm like, for you, it's like already like almost like time for dinner. Yes, this is this is my like 6.30 p.m. I'm about right now, but that's okay. I'm you're, good. I'm you're good. almost at your 12 hour mark. I know. I know. I'm happy to be here, though. That's crazy. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, you got it. I, Amanda, since you, day one that you joined the PHL show, uh, morning show, I've been following because, Aww. of course, I love the I love everybody on that yes, show. I yes. love everybody in the news. And they're all big fans of you too. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I appreciate that a lot because they are good people, really yeah, good people. For sure. And, uh, you know, of course, like, you know, I had to sit back and, you know, check this person out. Like, who's this person coming in here filling these spots? <laughs> right. Because she was an amazing woman. So she was. I mean, she's it. been on my show twice. And, yeah. You know, and, you know, so, and I've been watching for the last three years. Almost three Almost years. Almost three years. Yeah, that was crazy. That goes by quick then. It does. So, and I got to tell you, you bring this sense of, um, you bring a really lightheartedness to the show. You sort of bring out some of the, the, the softer spot Aww, points of the show that come on. Thank you. And, and your, your, your energy is contagious. Thanks. I really appreciate that. No, that's great. I mean, it's yours. Like, and, and that <laughs> laugh. I, I love your laugh. Your laugh is a signature laugh, is it not? I, I feel like it is at this point. You either love it or you hate it, I guess. And if you hate it, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> exactly. It's great. It really is. But um, thank you so much again for being here. Yeah, This absolutely. means a lot. I know how hard it is that you get up every morning. What time do you get up? I get up. I try to get up at 2.15, usually I'm actually out of the bed by about 2.30 in the morning. <sighs> Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Then and I'm in the shower. Then I'm running out the door. Now, do you get dressed to get to the, or do you get dressed at the station? Oh no. There, I put on yoga pants and a t-shirt every morning. <laughs> <laughs> There's no makeup on my face. I get to the studio as fast as possible. I start writing for the show, looking over the show, the things that are already written. I do all that stuff. We have our morning meeting. Then I go and evolve. I transform <laughs> into, <laughs> into the person that you see on TV. So you get up in the morning. What time do you get to the station? I try to get there around like 3.15 every morning. All right. that's, the, that's the plan. And I live very close to the station. It takes me, there's obviously no traffic mm -hmm. at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I can usually get there in about 10 minutes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's Just perfect. Fly around the highway. Yeah. I feel like you're a VIP. I would never fly down the highway, though. I take my time. I would never run a red light. I would never do any of these things. Well, unlike me... <laughs> She won't. I will. Um, <laughs> I will be transparent. I have flown down the highway <laughs> in several occasions. Same. Um, <laughs> same. Same. I have maybe ran a red light or two. <laughs> yeah. but you know. It was yellow at first. But it was. It used to be. And then just out of nowhere, it I turned know. red. Well, we, we know the laws of the lights, right? It's green means go, mm -hmm. red means stop, and yellow means go faster. Yeah, speed up, hurry yes, up. Yes, go. <laughs> I gotta Don't go. Don't you dare slow down. I have a place to be. <laughs> um, so, and then the show goes on at 5 a.m. Yes, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday. It's a lot. It's four hours, oh. four hours of news, weather, traffic, trending stories, Craziness from across the country, everything that we can think Bringing of. Bringing community, meet with community. Just, Absolutely. It changes for you. Yes. So like your first three hour format is more like the news. Mm -hmm. You sort of just, and, and it's interesting because I watch it. I watch, I, it's the only morning news show I watch. And Yay. people know that out there because I talk about it and I broadcast that all the time. <laughs> but, you know, I, it's interesting because you all, for the first three hours, you really are repeating the news. Mm -hmm for the people who are tuning in at those yep. hours. Yep. But for me, it's almost like I'm hearing it for the first time because honestly, y'all bring it a different way each time. You don't yeah. do it the same way. Yeah, we try to make it feel like a little bit different mm -hmm. for rewarding the viewers who have stuck around with us. Uh, we try to make it feel a little bit different. Um, sometimes we'll change out a story here and there, especially when 
Um, from 5 o'clock to 6 a.m. we have, or 5 o'clock to 7 a.m. we have one producer who produces the first two hours. Then we have another producer who comes in and produces the last two hours. So the new producer kind of comes in, changes things up a little bit, puts in some new stories, more fun, lighthearted stuff. Mm -hmm. Because we know people are transitioning. Mm -hmm. People are leaving the house, they're turning the news off. Other people who might be staying home or maybe they're working from home or... Um, maybe they don't work at all, that's when they are turning on the TV. They maybe want to see something a little bit more lighthearted, right. you know? Maybe they don't want to see all the doom and gloom anymore. So yeah. that's what we try to do. And as I was watching this morning and thinking about us meeting today, and um, of course I felt like I've known you, you know, forever now because <laughs> I'm one of those persons, a fanboy, like, oh, hi, Amanda, you know, hey. and you're on TV, you know. And, I'm in your living room all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. You know, just that you're dressed nicer, you know, <laughs> yes. and, and, and I'm still wrapped up in my boxers and T-shirt. And, and it's, so, That's all right. Yeah. It's cash. It's cash. It, that's why I say very cash, very, very informal. <laughs> but I, I, I have a feeling that there's sometimes that behind that desk, those leggings stay on and it's just, you know. Mm. Oh yeah. Business oh, up yeah. top there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's um, you know, also it's very cold in the studio sometimes. So we got the leggings on, we have the sneakers on, in the winter we got the boots on. It gets a little chilly, but I will say that will all be coming to an end very soon because we are getting a new studio. It's coming. They have torn down our old set. It's totally gone. It's we have a new floor in the studio. They're bringing in all of the TVs, all the monitors. It's going to be completely brand new. So we're going to have so many different shots around the studio. It's going to be great. I'm so excited, but I do have to say goodbye to my leggings. <laughs> which I'm going to be very sad about because I know it's going to be cold. We will be okay. We're so happy. We're so stoked. That's awesome. Yeah. I was in the studio last year uh, for my nonprofit. I went in and did a thing on the coach drive and it was interesting because uh, you and Kelsey were both out that day. Mm -hmm. Oh. Of course. Boo. It was Jen and uh, Alex. Okay. We're in. Yeah. And those stairs. Oh, so many stairs. I think the stairs here are killer. That Yeah. Mm -hmm. That it's it, some there's something with those stairs where once you finally get up to the very top, you cannot breathe. I don't know what it is. Now, I love to work out. I work out almost every single day. I have a bike, I have a treadmill in my basement. I'm very dedicated to working out and I can't take those stairs. Every time I'm breathing heavily and Monica always makes fun of me because I try to go up the stairs and then immediately start a conversation with somebody and Monica always says, okay, breathe. I know you just took the stairs. <laughs> So, I don't know what it is about It's like them. arriving in Denver, stay hydrated. Yes, you know? exactly. <laughs> Crazy. So, let's talk about, you know, let's talk about Amanda. You know, here you are, you're in Philly. You had just got here a couple of years ago, yeah. you and your wife. Mm-hmm. You moved here from? Well, we moved here from the Cleveland slash Pittsburgh area. My wife is an attorney. So she, and she's from Pittsburgh originally. Okay. So she was still working in Pittsburgh. I was still working in Cleveland. And <laughs> we lived in the middle of Pittsburgh and Cleveland, which is the wonderful town of Youngstown, Ohio. Oh, okay. Um, and so we, at first we lived apart um, for a little while. Then we got married. We were still living apart. And we decided maybe a month or two after that, forget it. We're just going to live together in the middle. The commute's going to be awful, but we're going to do it. Um, and we started driving an hour and 20 minutes each way to work just so we could live together in the middle. Um, that was a lot, but we did it. And then she got this amazing job offer to move to Philly and um, open up a branch of this law firm. And it was such a something so great that she just couldn't pass up. It was really hard for me at first, mm -hmm. though, because... I am a journalist, mm -hmm. I am on TV, I'm a reporter, I'm an anchor, and when you move into another news market, there's only so many places you can work, okay? So here in Philly, there's only five TV stations. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was very nervous about that. Also, Philly is the number four news market in the country, mm -hmm. which it, Cleveland's nothing to sneeze at. It's number 19, so it's a very wonderful news wow, market. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's I mean, it's, when you hear it's Cleveland, up there. Yeah, right. You think like oh, it's a, but no, it's number 19 because Cleveland also has um, Akron as well. That's like included the in their area. news market. Yes. Um, so I was like, oh man, I'm so nervous. I don't know. 
Um, but I just thought, let's let's try, let's do it. Um, and we moved here. We moved here in November of 2020, which is oh crazy. Gosh. Why would we ever do that, right? <laughs> so we moved here. We bought a house because the mortgage rates were so low <laughs> and the apartments were so expensive. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, we might as well just buy this house. We bought a house in Point Breeze. And we're so happy that we did because we love it. We love the neighborhood, all that good stuff. Um, but when we first moved here, nothing was open. Um, mm -hmm. We couldn't really meet anybody because everything was still shut down because, you know, COVID. COVID. <laughs> um, so we, we started to, luckily in like 2021, you know, end of 2021, 2022, everything started to be very Philly again. Um, and we've since just fallen on, in love with this place. I mean, it's such a great place. We've since had a daughter um, since we moved here. She's one, oh which God. is crazy. She's the sweetest and best thing ever. Um, and we just never want to leave. Like That's Philly, awesome. Philly's our home now. It's a great place to be, isn't it? It is. It really is. I feel like it's a bad rap. Like it's a I bad, do too. For sure. I yeah. do too. Yeah. And I just, I think that um, people don't really understand like what Philly is and, mm -hmm. and, and what Philly can be. Um, I don't think that people really understand that it's a bunch of little neighborhoods. They don't understand the history. They don't, they don't appreciate that. You just kind of see the negative about mm -hmm. Philly and you think, oh, it's the stepchild of New York and DC. Right, like, the little oh, apple. Oh no, baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. We have our own culture. We have our own brand. We have our own people. I mean, it's just, it's a great place. And hands down, we have some of the best food in the country. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Go to New York. I don't find good food in New York. I it's not love like Philly food. I don't, I don't, rem I don't, I can't think that I've ever said, I love this particular restaurant in New York. I want to go back and yeah. eat. Yeah. And like I mean, there's, there's good stuff. Yes, but it's of not course. like Philly food. Absolutely. The, Absolutely. The food scene here. And there's like, there's love in our food. There's like yes. blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, I think, I think that, um, just something as simple as the restaurants here help you get to know what Philly is. Absolutely. Truly. And you feel like you're at home when you walk in usually. Yes. And I love the fact that you're using the word our because you have embraced this as oh, yeah. your city. Oh yeah, this uh, this is my city. I don't I don't want to leave Philly. I want us to stay in Philly. Obviously, you know, if circumstances change, life is life, right? Um, but that's our plan. Our plan is to stay in Philly. We love being here. We love going down the shore every summer. Um, we we really enjoy it here. That's amazing. And your wife's name? Her name is Kira. Kira. Yeah. And so you and Kira. You were against the odds there. She was in Pittsburgh. I know. You were in Cleveland, and at hour 20, that could have really yeah. you made that work. Yeah, we, we had to make it work, you know, and um, Kira and I's love story is is very sweet. So we... Um, Tell me. Yeah, we went to college together. Where? We went to Oberlin College in Ohio, um, which is another reason why I loved working in Cleveland, because all my professors could turn on the TV and like see that I was actually doing what I said I was going to do, which was really cool. That's a whole other story. <laughs> um, but so we went to Oberlin College in Ohio. It's about half an hour outside of Cleveland. And um, we both were recruited to play basketball there. So we were on the basketball team together. We were best friends in college, best friends about 10 years after college. Um, and then we were coming from one of our mutual friends who was also a basketball player coming from her wedding. I was on the mega bus. I was broke back then. Okay? Mega bus, I, <laughs> I, I still like the mega bus, 14 bucks, you know, right? It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, but I don't think you took the mega bus from Pittsburgh to New York. I don't think you would ever do that. It was like 15 hours. That's all I could afford. I was like in my first oh, TV wait, this news from job. Pittsburgh to New York? Yes, New York City. That's where mm. I went to grad school. Um, after I left Oberlin, I went to grad school um, at NYU. And then I stayed in the New York area for my first couple news jobs. Um, and so when I was going to, when I was going to my friend's wedding, I had to go from New York City on the mega bus to Pittsburgh. Then Kira and I met in Pittsburgh and we drove to Michigan together. It was really all I could afford. I mean, living in New York City, it's, you know, it's wow. rough. Wow, yeah, absolutely. So I'm on the mega bus going back to New York, and Kira sends me a text message, and she says, do you think, have you ever thought about us being more than friends? And then I said, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Burst that bubble. <laughs> yeah, like, no, 
know. I just, I love our friendship, but you know, whatever. Obviously that changed, uh, you know, she broke me down. Yeah. Um, but you know, we've been, we have always been like very close friends and um, you know, our, our since relationship has obviously changed things, but things are still very much so the same. Um, and it feels, it feels really good. It feels really natural. Um, sometimes people, you know, ask, oh, you know, how, how did the transition work? How did you know that you were in love with her, you know, as a girlfriend, as opposed to a friend? And I'm like, I don't really know. I, re I can't, cause it was just so seamless and so easy. And I'm the worst with relationships. So for me to even like, go, oh yeah, I, I don't know because <laughs> you know, I'm going to perpetually be a bachelor till I'm dead. <laughs> And I'm okay cool. with that. That's I'm cool. so That's okay cool. with that. Yeah. Um, and it was cool because my mom wasn't really disappointed she didn't get grandchildren. So that was cool. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I'm the worst with that. But, you know, they, they say that, you know, in order to really pursue and stay in a really, you know, you start with that friend and it just yeah. evolves. Yeah. You don't ask questions. It just happens. It just, it it just, just happens. happens. And it happened very easily and very simply for us. I was worried about our friendship. I really wanted to keep our friendship no matter what. So we kept promising each other as we moved along in our relationship. Okay, if this doesn't work out, we're still gonna be friends, we're still gonna be friends. Um, but luckily it worked out, so it's oh, okay. Yeah. In December, we'll be married for five years. Five years? So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. You hit that mark, it's like a job. You're there five years, you're good. <laughs> you're good, you can hang that hat, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so we're, we're very happy. And those five years you have? A daughter. Yeah, so we have a daughter. We have Harper. She is that. the sweetest little thing. Um, she is starting to walk, which is crazy to think about because she was just so little. Um, and uh, Kira, my wonderful wife, um, gave birth to her, and I'm so grateful that I didn't have to put my body through that. <laughs> so we just, we just thank God. We thank God. Um, but Harper is the absolute best. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I'm going to ask you this question because my, um, my cousin and uh, she and her wife, uh, they were trying and her wife wasn't able. And then, and my cousin, who I never pictured being Karen, pregnant and carrying yeah. a child, yeah. she like sent me a message and she was like, guess who's pregnant? And I was <laughs> You're like, like, not you. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I need to start drinking again. You know, <laughs> eight years of recovery, let's burn it all down. Um, but, um, you know, I, I know it was, a difficult decision. How did that decision happen on who was going to carry or and what? You know, um, without getting like too personal, yeah. um, Kira has always felt that pull mm -hmm. to carry and to physically like have the child, um, which was great. More maternal. Yes. Right on. I never really felt that. Okay. And, and not that I never will. Um, but I never felt like I needed to have the child in order for me to feel like connected. Um, and so I knew that, Hey, if, if that's what you want to do, I am down for it. I love that message you just said though. You never, yeah. you didn't have to actually ha give birth to feel yeah. that connection. No. And I mean, that's your daughter. Yes. You know, it's yes, your she child. Is. She, Your wife she sure birth. is. She you... has man mannerisms that are just like mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's mine. <laughs> so a one-year-old getting up at 2.30 a.m., yeah. it's not like your wife has a job where it's like, okay, it's going to be real easy. She's a lawyer. She yeah. started a law firm as a partner mm -hmm. here in Philly. How does that work for y'all? Uh, I mean, we make <laughs> it work. Um, it's, it is very difficult. There's a lot of, uh, luckily Harper's in daycare, which is very lovely. Shout out to the daycare workers. You guys are the best. <laughs> um, so I leave at two 30, three o'clock in the morning. Um, then Harper wakes up anywhere between five 30 and six 30. Kira gets up with her, gets her breakfast ready, gets her ready for daycare, takes her to daycare, and then Kira can finally sort of get on with her day. Um, but then, since I do, since I do have this like sort of odd schedule, um, I'm able to pick up Harper a lot earlier from daycare mm -hmm. than like most of the other kids get picked up. I get to pick her up at like 3:30. I need to go home. I need to nap first, okay? <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I, need a, I need a second to myself. And then I pick her up at, at 3.30 and then we get to have the rest of the afternoon together. Then Kira's done around 5, 6, 6.30 or so. And then we can kind of combine as a family. So Kira gets more on the front end. I get more on the back end and we kind of make it work. It's good balance. 
It is a really good balance. I do wish I had more time though with Kira at night because I go to sleep when Harper goes to sleep. So once we're sleeping, Kira's just sitting around like, all right, <laughs> um, I guess I'll watch TV. I don't, I don't really know. Um, so I, I do miss that time because I have to go to bed for mm -hmm. work. Um, but we make up for it on the weekends. We put Harper to bed and, you know, we go crazy. We turn on Netflix, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what can parents do anymore when you have to stay home because you have the kid, you know? So, I don't know. I'm okay with Netflix. Yeah. It's all right by me. <laughs> it's, it's a hell of a Saturday night. I don't want to go out anymore. <laughs> I do sometimes, but... Not that much. And you said you go down the shore? Yes. What shore point do you like? Um, we like Margate and we mm. like Ocean City. Both are great. Yeah, those are our favorites. We love Ocean City the most now with Harper because then we can put her in the stroller. We can walk up and down the boardwalk. Yeah. It's super simple. And so we love that. Um, but Margate's a little bit closer for us. And so if we just want to make like a quick trip, we know we're only going to be there for a couple hours. That's, that's our go-to. But there's so many shore points I haven't been to yet. And I need to like, I know, don't kill me. I haven't been to Cape May yet, which I know is like an awful thing. I really should go there, but we'll get there. I'm not that gay. I don't go to Cape May. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually the person that goes to Wildwood. So. <laughs> okay. okay. We have been to Wildwood. We really enjoyed it. So well, yeah. You know, and, and Wildwood's cool, but no, there's a lot of great shore points. Yes. Um, there, Margate's one of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, it has one of my favorite restaurants, Stephen Cookies. Oh, I don't think I've been there yet. Uh, we'll have to go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You will be in heaven. Oh, great. You know, and if, uh, if you like all types, but their food is just mm. to die for, hands down. Okay. On the Bay, really good. Okay. Just try it out. Okay. okay. Yeah, but Margaret's, yeah. You know, yeah, there's a lot of cool short points, yeah. you know? Ugh, it's so wonderful. It just, is. I don't think we appreciated that moving to Philly, how close we were going to be to the Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. We really didn't appreciate that. Um, and it's, and it's so funny because Kira's from Pittsburgh, you would think, oh, you know, she's been to Philly a couple times. I learned once I moved to Philly, if you live in Philly, you probably haven't even been to Pittsburgh. Nobody <laughs> like, goes to Pittsburgh, Ohio. No. Nobody goes to Pittsburgh, Ohio ever. <laughs> Why would we do that? I mean, you probably <laughs> wouldn't. <laughs> if you, if you live here, there's not really a lot of, I know, born, reason. born and raised first half of my life here. I mean, my family's been here forever, but mm -hmm. I've been in Pittsburgh once. Yeah. One time, and only because I had to. Yes. I had to go to a wedding. <laughs> okay, I lie. I actually had to perform the wedding, so that's why I went. If I didn't have to perform, I probably would have RSVP. No, sorry. No, thank you. <laughs> Can't do it. Um, and, and Pittsburgh's a, a, a great town. It has, you know, its own things. We definitely love Philly a lot more. I mean, if we didn't, we would live in Pittsburgh, you know? You know, and it's, it's funny because I, I think I took for granted, like, growing up around here, for the fact that I was that close to the shore, to yeah. the ocean. Mm -hmm. And I love the ocean, I love the beach. I'm one of those, like the East Coast is like, yes. I could never picture living at a state off the coast. Mm -hmm. I could never like, for work one year, I, for, for one year they took me out to Denver for like a couple months. Mm -hmm. I was so out of my element. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, where's the ocean? Where's the beach? Where are these mountains, do? you know? <laughs> yes, yes. Even though I do love the mountains because Pennsylvania has some great mountains. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, the shore is a great place. It's just beautiful here. We have so many different options of things that we want to do. That's really cool. So media, I mean, getting into journalism and reporting and anchor, I mean, that's a certain personality, first of all. Yes, yes, definitely. How old were you when you said, that's what I want to do when I grow up? I was a junior in college, and oh. not because I, uh, not because there was a certain journalist who I loved, not because I just would watch news all the time and I thought, oh, I need to do this. It was because I was about to graduate soon and I had to kind of write down everything that I was good at because I was like, wait a second, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna graduate, I have no idea. So I started thinking about all the things that I was passionate about and the things that I loved and uh, careers that I could kind of see myself doing. Um, and I thought about, I thought about news and I thought about journalism and I thought about all the wonderful things that I liked mm -hmm. about it. Um, and I was like, hmm, I could do this. I did not think that I wanted to be on camera at first. I thought I wanted to um, maybe write for like a newspaper. Well, you know, a newspaper now it's like online media, right? No, but um, yeah, back then. So you wanted yeah. to be poor. I, I wanted to be poor. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I should have said it like poor. that. You know, I didn't really mean it like that, but I. <laughs> I meant you I just, want to make no yeah, money. Yeah, you want to make no money. No goals. Want, yeah, and have um, no life. Yeah, exactly. Can't, <laughs> Sorry. Can't That's what I should have said. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it's all good. Um, 
So I thought I wanted to do that at first, um, but the more I started to learn about TV news, the more I was like, wow, I really love this. I love to be able to tell people stories. Now that was my number one thing and why mm. I started in reporting and why I love reporting so much. That is something I really miss, miss about being an anchor. Now I don't do as much reporting as I would like to, and I just miss the people. I miss talking to them. I miss asking the right questions to get the best answers. I miss that so much. And I, I do have the opportunity to do it sometimes, but not the everyday reporting grind, which gets to be a lot sometimes. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. um, but so I, I kind of combined all these things and I'm like, you know what I want to do? Um, I want to do journalism. I want to be in TV news. So I did some internships. Um, some really cool ones, actually, because I decided to go to grad school. Oh, also, I graduated in 2009 when the economy just, you know, all went to crap. That was awful. Um, so it was either go to grad school or sleep on my mom's couch. I decided to go to grad school. <laughs> so I went to NYU for grad school for journalism. Uh, it was a year and a half program. Really loved it. Met um, some great people there. Met a professor there who had become my mentor and who has since become one of my really good friends. And she's like Harper's third grandma. She's the best person ever. And she lives in Philly, which is really? also really That's great. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So she's now a professor at Temple. So it's really cool. Yeah. Got, we got the family here. Um, so I, I, um, I started out at ABC news in New York. I was a producer. Um, I know, I don't know how I got that job. <laughs> 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 No idea. Um, but I started out as a producer. ABC News, not like the Channel network. 7. No, no. I not. started out at the network there, which was really cool. Um, so I started out um, being like a producer there, kind of producers. I was on the news desk as well. So like sometimes I had to, I did the overnight shift. I did midnight to 9 a.m. on the weekends, Ooh. right? Craziness. You probably got a lot of good stuff coming I in. I did. And wow. there was, there were so many things happening. I was there on the desk when we learned that Osama bin Laden had been killed. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I was there. I was one of the first people to get the calls at ABC News. To get that news. And I had to, I had to wake up. I won't like name drop, but part of our, <laughs> part of our duty on the news desk was you had to wake up the anchors and the correspondents mm -hmm. at two and three in the morning and say, hey, I have a flight booked for you and blah, 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 blah. You're gonna have to like go this place or hey, you have to come in, we're doing a special, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that was really cool. That was really fun. Um, and then I started working for um, the early morning news show, World News Now. And I became their like desk assistant. Who was um, the anchors then? I had a couple different anchors when I was there. I always had um, Rob Nelson, which was like super fun. I love Rob. He is a wonderful mentor and friend to this day. Um, I also had Sonny Hostin when I was there, who is now one of the co-hosts of The View, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Um, Paula Ferris was there oh, when I was there. Diana good... Alvarez was there when I was there. I mean, it's, it, I had a lot of different The reason I anchors. asked that was because um, I, being a person that's in recovery, uh, when I was in active addiction back then, um, World News Now mm -hmm. was one that I would watch because yes. And Diane Alvarez was on at the time. Yeah. And that's uh, her husband is Deuces Rogers. Yes, yes. So, and I fell in love with that show, mm -hmm. World News Now. And mm -hmm. it was just a great show. It's that's so, so cool funny. that you were yes. working right I was the you. one. I was the one who was behind the scenes um, copying the scripts for the anchors and passing it to them in the commercial break. So I used to do that for the anchors, and now I'm an anchor, anchor which is crazy. And it's full circle. It feels really cool. Well, and you're a, you're a prime example of what the hard work and determination yes. does yes. in the media market yes, where it absolutely. can get you. Mm -hmm, for sure. And like I started there and I you know, was kind of doing those things. Then I got to do it more. I got to do more. And they actually let me, which I don't know why, but they let me start to review movies for them. So I would go to the movie theater on a Friday night, a Saturday night, whatever, and I would watch the movie. And then they gave me like a little camera and I would interview people like after the movie. And then on Monday morning, I would go on the set. So like I'm 21, 22 at this point, going on network TV news, just doing movie reviews. I was not qualified to do this, but I just had a good personality. They liked that I was, trying and like pitching new things and i did it for like a couple months and then i used those very silly movie reviews to get my first reporting job 
um, which was super cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. Where was your first reporting job at? So the station doesn't exist anymore, which is really sad, but um, I reported for Fios One News on Long Island. So I stayed in New York, which was really cool because I got to stay, I got to stay at my apartment in Brooklyn for like a little while and I just commuted back and forth to Long Island. That Long Island Railroad commute. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do that from Patchogue into the city. Oh my gosh. That's so far. <laughs> it's so creepy and scary yes. too. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And and Long Island was um, you know, a really, really great place yeah. and where I'm so happy that I got my my kind of like reporting grit from Long Island because it's technically the New York City market, mm -hmm. right? And so I am, this is my first reporting job ever. I'm probably like 24 at this point, 25, mm -hmm. something like that. But I am elbow and elbow with all of these really great journalists and great reporters. So they're doing their stories, right? And I'm doing my mediocre stories. <laughs> I go home at the end of the day, I rewatch what I put together and then I watch what they did and I am comparing the exact same stories and I'm learning from them every single day. I know, okay, this is what I need to be do better. Oh, I should have really started with that. That was such a good idea. And then as I did that more, I can kind of see like, oh, I kind of did better than them on this. You know, like, oh, I, I did this thing better or that thing better. Um, and it made me such a good reporter so quickly because I was just working with the best of the best. Not really working with them, but I was learning from them, which was so cool. That's excellent. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, so it was amazing. When you were in the field reporting what were your favorite type of news stories to report on i'm a hard news person like through and through i love the breaking news i love the hard news i love when something is moving fast something's like really fast paced i am a very naturally overly energetic person mm -hmm. but for some reason when, when i'm on the scene i can kind of take that energy and make it a very calm energy and turn it into urgency for the audience but not make myself like overly hyper mm -hmm. um, and I just really enjoy doing that sometimes things happen really fast and you have to get people the story very quickly maybe for their safety mm -hmm. maybe because they heard something is going on in their neighborhood and they turn they turn you on you want to make sure that you get them the best information the quickest that you possibly can and I thrive off of that kind of stuff. I love it. That's great. Yeah. That's cool. It's, it's fun. I, I, that's the edge. Yeah. It's, it's that edge you like mm -hmm. and you know, and you have that, you have that persistency probably for it and that assertiveness to do yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. You know, and you need that. Uh, do you miss do. the field? I do. You do? I do. I miss it a lot. but. But anchoring is different. It's a different muscle that I'm flexing now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I came into this job at, um, at PHL 17. So, so from Fios 1 in New York, then I actually went to WFMZ in Allentown, That's Pennsylvania. From. Yeah. Channel 69. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was me. Yeah, that was me. I, I loved my time there. It was so great. Really? Um, yeah. So I worked in the, I worked in the Allentown station for like a little while. And then I moved over to the Burks station in Reading yes. because there was so much more breaking news there. There were so many more things going on. And I was like, I want to be like where the action is. I got to do down Penn Street in Reading they, and you can find a new story. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was fun. Like I lived in Reading when, when I, uh, when I worked there Did and you? it was, oh yeah, it was fun. So you didn't live in Allentown at all. I lived there for six or seven months. And then when I moved over to the, the Reading, the Berks County Bureau, then I just like moved over there. I did, was committed. Did you find it like a little weird, like where the Allentown station was located? Yes. Yes. <laughs> In the it middle was... of nowhere? <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. In the middle of there a were mountain? Like, there were like deers on the property. I'm from Chicago, okay? I'm a city girl. I lived in New York City for five years. I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> Weird, mama, where am I? <laughs> you're driving up that back mountain road and all yes. of a sudden you see the big satellite dish. You're like, where the hell am I? And your phone doesn't really have reception anymore. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> terrifying. What year were you there? Oh man, 2015 okay. to 2017, I think. Wow. Because I was there for two years and then after that I went to Cleveland. Oh, so you're not a stranger to the area then? No, uh, no, I'm like... not. I I can say things like, 
I don't know, what are the crazy towns in, in Berks County and we could start in Allentown. There's yeah, there are so many, there's of them. So, many. so many of them. But that's why I was so excited to come back because when I lived in Allentown and when I lived in Reading, um, one of my good friends was working in Philly at the time. So I came to Philly like a lot to visit her or if there was a really big news story, um, I would come to Philly to do that. So that was really fun too. And I kind of knew like, oh, I kind of like Philly. Like this is a good, this is a good news market and um, we always used to watch the Philly stations to kind of say, oh, are they covering, you know, Berks County or mm -hmm. Reading or whatever? What are they talking about um, when it comes to us? So I kind of knew the Philly market already and I was really excited to get back. So, awesome. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So you, you know, I always and it's this I wonder this because the older I get and I don't know why, because I should be more hard and I become this more sensitive person sometimes with the news when I hear it and stuff. <laughs> yes. I don't know why, because I still have this hardness to me. Where, but like, how do you handle that? Like, first thing in the morning, where you want everybody to be like upbeat and you want to be in a good mood and positive and focused. You're sometimes delivering the most depressing or the mm -hmm. worst news possible to people. Yes. How do you personally handle something like that? It's it's a number of ways. So sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's really hard. And on days when it's really hard, I let the audience know that it's really hard. I don't sugarcoat it. I don't make it seem like, oh man, this is just another day in Philly. Oh, we got crime deal with it. Sometimes stories do hit you harder than others. And when they hit me harder, I deliver the news with that same sort of emotion that I'm feeling. And I think that I think that viewers appreciate that mm -hmm. because sometimes after hearing story after story of this person shot, this person was this, this person was that, you sort, sort of lose sight of that these are real people, this is actually really happening. Um, but sometimes you, you really feel it and you let the people know that you really feel it. And they, they respond how they want to respond, but I think once you sort of evoke that feeling of emotion, they might stop doing the dishes or stop yelling at their kids or whatever and take a look at the TV for a moment, take that moment in, digest the information, and then still go on with their day. Um, and then I have to learn to not bring everything home with me. Mm -hmm. I, I was really bad about that um, when I first started reporting. When I was on Long Island, I, I mean, I witnessed some of the most gruesome stuff ever in my career working there. Um, and I went through like a time where I was trying to save everybody, so where I was Nassau trying County. to, uh, well, I lived in Nassau County, but honestly, we covered the whole uh -huh. island. I know it was crazy. I, I don't know how we drove back and forth that much, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's a big place. Yeah, it is. Um, but yes, I personally lived in Nassau County, which was like good in, mm -hmm. in terms of like my commute and stuff. But, um, but yeah, it's just, it's just figuring out the stories that are going to stick with you and being okay with that. And then figuring out what you do with that. And that's what everybody does when they're watching the news every morning, there might be two or three stories that stick with them. And then they tell their friend about it and maybe they'll they're going to go to the website and donate or maybe they're going to you know it's those couple things that stick with you and they stick with me too so i'm just a viewer just as much as the mm -hmm. viewers are viewers and i love that because you're transparent yeah you let people know you're human mm -hmm. and i think that's really important because i think sometimes when we're watching the news we just look at them as being you know newscasters news anchors mm -hmm. whatever you know yeah. we don't look at them as being people yeah you know, it's sometimes it's almost like robotics going through the motions yes. behind the desk. Yes. But what I love about your show and, and I'm going to call it your team in the morning. Yeah. Um, Kelsey, Monica and Jenna is the fact that, well, number one, it's a powerhouse of women. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just say that. Yes. You yes. have a powerhouse show of women in the morning. You are, it's a groundbreaker in Philly. Yeah. Because they're other than the channel 10, I mean, I, the 10 o'clock now on channel mm -hmm. six with mm -hmm. all women. You're the first all women broadcast in Philly. Yeah. Yeah, we are. And we, we love it. We love each other. There's, you know, a lot of times where you're thinking, do they actually like each other? You know, when you're watching certain newscasts mm -hmm. or whatever, we actually do. We really like each other. We love each other. Um, and we love that we are all very serious about our jobs. We take what we do very personally. 
Um, we criticize each other, we critique each other. Um, if I say a word wrong, you know, maybe I pronounce something wrong, and the commercial break, Kelsey will say, hey, hey, it's actually this. And I'm not like, ugh. You know, why would she ever tell me that? It's like, hey, we're pushing mm -hmm. each other to get better. We got to make sure that we're saying this right or that right or whatever. Or if Kelsey writes a script in the morning, right, and she, she reads it, maybe when Monica is doing the weather, I can say, hey, you know, that script was like a little weird. She's like, I thought it was a little weird. So it's never, ever anything. There's no egos involved. We just all want to make sure we're doing the best that we can do. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really refreshing being around other very powerful, opinionated mm -hmm. women who we somehow all get along. And it's very genuine. It really is. I don't think you can fake what we do. There's no way. Honestly, like because I know each of you now, I, in, I know it's not being fake. No. Like you can tell there's sincerity there. Mm -hmm. And that is, like I said, it, you're very, four very strong different personalities, yeah. you know, from different areas of life, mm -hmm. um, different backgrounds, different yep. everything. So it really meshes well and, and it works well. Yeah. And I love that about it. Um, and I love the fact that you are all very supportive of each other. Yes. And that shows. Yes, we are. And, you know, I didn't know how I was going to kind of fit in with everyone mm -hmm. because uh, Monica, Jenna, Kelsey, well, Kelsey's from Lancaster County, but Jenna and Monica, they're both from Delco. And coming into a situation where you're the only one who's not really from the area, that can definitely be hard. I mean, they have some of the same mutual friends. Right. They they know some of the same things. I mean, I used to say going to the beach and they're like, Amanda, you're going I'm down the shore. shore. Okay. You're not going to the beach. All Jersey right. doesn't have any beaches. <laughs> right. There's no beaches. You're just going down the shore. And so like, you know, it took me a little while to kind of figure out where I fit mm -hmm. with these ladies. Um, but it was never like, uh, you know, uh, oh, she's an outsider, like, uh, whatever. She's not going to be here for too long. It was always <laughs> that they embraced me and they were happy that I was there. And I'm still constantly learning from them. And I think they're learning from me, too. Well, that's good that none of them were, like, tripping on the stairs or anything. <laughs> <laughs> No, definitely not. If anybody was to trip me down the stairs, it would be Monica. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, as I said that, that's why I thought behind you, like, oops, yeah, well, sorry. sorry. You Did okay? you hurt yourself? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to kill me. <laughs> that's why I'm glad I don't have to deal with her every day or right. see her. See, that's perfect, you know? We just won't tell her about this. Yeah, it's you all right. You know, we we'll, won't tell her. Yeah, we'll cut you know, out this part. <laughs> the, last time, the last time we didn't tell, we, I had Monica and Jenna on and they didn't tell Kelsey they were doing it. Mm -hmm. So Kelsey was texting, like, where are you, where are you? I'm like, great, now I'm gonna have to have her right, back on my right. show. Gotcha. So then, Come on, and then guys. I took her for brunch afterwards and I said to Jenna, I'm like, I even had to buy brunch now. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys but, are costing me money, all right? You know, and one thing I wanna ask that I, I wanna talk about, and if it, it doesn't interest you and you're done, let me know, because me, myself, I am um, a member of the LGBTQ plus community. There's probably more letters there nowadays, but I'm old school. Yeah, you know? you're so, good, you're good. Um, um, and you know, I find sometimes that I, I use that as a hindrance in my own mind to block myself from furthering because people may look at me differently. And this mm. was years ago. You know, yeah. you yourself, um, not just that, you know, you are part of the LGBTQ plus community, mm -hmm. um, being a black woman in media. Yeah. You're up to some odds there. There's some odds against you, yeah. you think? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you felt or how you fought those odds or yeah. just overcame them? You know, I am, I'll talk about being a black woman first because I think that when I first started out in my career, I didn't see a ton of people like doing what I wanted to do that were like black women, especially black women who were wearing their natural hair on TV. Um, so that's like a whole nother obstacle that I faced, um, which I, I didn't, and maybe that was me being naive, but I didn't know that it was going to be that big of an obstacle because my whole life I had just worn my hair the way that God let it grow out of my scalp, you know, right. and it wasn't like a big deal to me. Um, but as I sort of continued with my career, I found that that started to be an obstacle. Luckily now, there are so many black women who mm. are wearing their natural hair or they're wearing protective styles, like they're wearing braids and things like that on TV. Whereas I just look like I'm part of the, the group. Everybody's doing it and it's so, it's so cool now. But 
when I first started, there wasn't a lot of us doing it. Um, and so I, I found that to be, you know, really challenging. Um, but then also just being a black woman, doing what I wanted to do and, and doing what I love, I just, sometimes I just find that so challenging because in, in media, a lot of our bosses are white men. A lot of the producers and you know folks who who aren't as familiar with TV news, the producers are the ones who really decide what's going to be on TV, right? Mm -hmm. um, they pick the stories. A lot of times, they're writing the stories. And while I do write, I do some of that stuff. I have to really focus on reading through the stories, making sure I'm fixing things, things like that, so I don't have as much time to do that. Um, and so you know, we have a lot of people who don't look like me who are deciding what our viewers are going to mm -hmm. watch every morning. Um, and so that in and of itself was a challenge because there were stories that I knew needed to be told. Mm -hmm. And then I do not mince words. I speak up when I think something is important. I talk about it. And a lot of times you feel like, oh God, I have to be the one again, the black woman who is speaking up and telling them that we really need to cover this because people in my community are affected by this. Or we need to cover this thing that we're already covering in this certain way because we're not realizing the biases that we are showing when we cover it that way. And so a lot of times I find myself being the one of the only black people in the newsroom who have to speak up on behalf of the other black people who are out there watching. Um, and that is exhausting. That draining. It's very draining. Um, and I think that, you know, with everything that has happened in this country, especially, you know, when 2020 all went down, everything happened, um, I think people were more willing and more open to listen and mm -hmm. understand that, okay, maybe what she's been telling us for 10 years is actually, you know, is actually correct. So that made my life a little bit easier, but still, there's a, there's a huge problem. There needs to be more people, not just black people, people of color in general, in TV news management, as producers. You see, you'll see us in front of the camera, right? And you'll right. think, oh, okay, you know, behind the scenes, there definitely needs to be more because those are the people who are making the decisions even very simple stuff like we need more photographers of color because the photographers are the ones who go out and they take what we call b-roll right? right and they're just taking regular footage of you know anything maybe people at a phillies game maybe trick-or-treaters and i remember this one time i was in cleveland and we were showing b-roll of trick-or-treaters and we just went to all these white neighborhoods and showed a bunch of trick-or-treaters who were white kids which is fine but i'm pretty sure there are some black kids who are trick-or-treating i'm Cleveland. pretty sure there are <laughs> there are latino kids who are trick-or-treating i'm pretty like things like that but those are the neighborhoods that they probably live in that they're comfortable with which is great but we need to expand we need to sh everybody needs to be able to see themselves in tv news the good the bad everything in between if we're going to cover a bad story in this neighborhood can we come back two weeks later and cover a good story there too isn't it's, that the isn't that the basis of writing good and bad news yes you, you give the good you give the bad you give yes. the bad because you want to compliment it absolutely you know and you I, i'm interjecting there because philly does that to mm -hmm. the communities here in Philly. Mm -hmm. There are communities here in Philly that are labeled bad communities. Yes. Because of what happens in them. Yes. They forget about the society and the people and the neighbors that yes. have been there forever mm -hmm. that are residents trying to make it on a day-by-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Now they have that reputation because they're in that community and that's what people said it as. So to hear you say that, I love that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, to hear you, and it, my, I gotta tell you, I had a little feeling in my gut here when you said it took you 10 years to get to that point. Yeah. That it took 10 years to be a voice mm -hmm. to finally have somebody say, hey, you know what? Maybe she's right. Yeah. Yeah. But if there's nobody in management who looks like me, then mm -hmm. why would you, you know, why would you think that? Or if there's if there's nobody in your family, if there's nobody in your group of friends who looks like me, right. then why would you think that what I'm saying is right? 
you know, mm -hmm. like it, you have to surround yourself with these people. You have to put these people in management positions so that they are the ones making the decisions and they can say, hey, guys, I think I know because <laughs> Because this is what we were talking about at my kitchen table last night. Mm -hmm. And this is what my family looks like. And if my family looks like this, I'm sure other people in my same community feel this way. And this is why we should tell the story in this certain way. So we just have to do a better job of making sure that everyone is included, especially in Philly, man. We have everybody here. Yes, we do. We have all kinds of people here, which is so beautiful, which is why this is such a great place for Kira and I to raise our daughter. What, I love could, it. what could be a better place? The birthplace of America. Of America. Come on. <laughs> you know, we are in the birthplace. And I say that because I'm a 1776 geek. Yeah. Like, you know, the stars, the stripes. The, like, I don't tell anybody, but when I walk through Old City for the, you know, 600th time, you know, I still get excited, like, yeah. oh my gosh, the Liberty Bell, yeah. where's the Liberty Bell? <laughs> you know, um, that's the way I sort of feel. So, but, you know, I, thank you for sharing that because, you know, I, I myself sometimes forget what it's like to be, um, maybe, you know, have a bias against or discriminated against or to not be heard or mm -hmm. listened to. Mm -hmm. And then I forget too, because I am white. And then sometimes people don't know I'm a member of the LGBTQ mm -hmm. plus community because if I did, then all of a sudden it's like, wow, maybe that's a strike against you. Yeah. You know, and people think that way. Yeah. So to hear you voice this and talk about being a voice for the people in your communities, yeah. that's the way it should be. And thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. And for, and, and for being natural. I got to tell you, I love your hair. Your hair is thank one of you. your trademarks. I watch it. <laughs> It's there. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's pulled back now because after four hours, I'm like, I just want to put it in a ponytail, please. <laughs> um, but you know, ma wearing my natural hair makes me feel so good. It makes me feel like me and it makes me know and understand that there's other little girls who have hair just like mine who are watching the news and they're like, oh, wow, I could do that one day because she looks like me. Or not, I don't even want to do this. I want to do something else that's hard or that I've never seen anybody in my community do or somebody who looks like that do. But if she's doing that and nobody else looks like her, then I think I can do the thing that I want to do. I love that. Yeah. So you're inspirational then. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you will. I hope so. There's going to there's gonna be that little girl one day saying, I did this because of you. Yeah. And you're going to be like, this was all worth that it. That is all worth it. And maybe it's Harper. All the sleepless nights. <laughs> If Harper wanted to become a news anchor, would you encourage it? Um, it's hard because, because I know how hard I've had to work to get to the place that I am. But you know what? She's going to be a hard worker, too. I she, know has, she has two strong women. She mom. has two, uh, two strong, strong moms. moms. Oh my gosh. She has two strong, two strong moms. So I think she'll definitely get that from us for sure. But, you know, it takes a very special kind of person. And I, I think like mama, the mama in me just wants to like kind of shield her from all the scary, bad, evil stuff, you know, that happens. Because you see it more than most. Yeah, definitely. So definitely. That, that, that's protective. That's mama bear. Yeah. But if she wants to do it, I, I think I would be really excited. Right on. Yeah. To follow in your footsteps. I would be. I'd be really happy. So other than the shore, what do you and Kira like to do for fun? What does is, what is Amanda do for herself for self-care? Oh, what do I do for self-care? I work out. I love working out. It yeah. makes me really happy. I um, hate it. It's really, oh, you hate it? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say it's fun, but the if we're talking about, yeah, we're good. If we're talking about self-care, you, know, <laughs> it, it, you know, it helps me live longer, I guess, whatever. That's what they tell me. Um, but that, so that's fun. I really like doing that. Um, I like hiking. I spent a lot of time at the Wissahickon, so that makes me like beautiful down there. Just, just being in nature, I really love it so much. Um, I've been there 16 years. My my backyard started at the Wissahickon by the hundred oh, stairs there, and wow, loved it. That's Such cool. Yeah. Well, look, that's why you don't like stairs. I know. <laughs> and the funny thing, those hundred stairs, I lived there for all those years. Four times. Four times. <laughs> there was a path on the other Sorry. side that went down. It was it's so much easier than stairs. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kira and I also have been very, very blessed where we have found a babysitter who comes every Friday night. So Friday night is our date night, which we have really come to love and appreciate. 
So, yeah. That's awesome. I was going to ask you about that. How do you get, do we make time for date night? Because mm -hmm. that's important too. Yeah. So you have a great babysitter that comes. Yes, and she's wonderful. Harper adores her, which is cool because I have to tell you, I'm going to show you some pictures of Harper after this. Harper has what we like to call a resting baby face. Okay. Oh. She does not, she doesn't like really talk to a lot of people. She kind of stares them down. She doesn't, anybody who's new, Harper's like, mm -mm, I'm not about that life. So to have this babysitter who she really loves is very good for us. You already have a strong child. She's already, <laughs> I, that, that woman's strong She's already. She's like, I'm, I'm not messing with you. So, so yeah, so it's really good. And we just, we do whatever on date night. We go to different restaurants. We go, we love like wineries and wine tasting and stuff like that. So we do a lot of that. Um, and yeah, we, I mean, there's, it's crazy because we've lived here for about three years now. Um, and we've tried so many different restaurants and there's still so many more that we have to try. It's crazy. Do you have a favorite? Oh, that's really hard. It is hard. But isn't it? In our, so we live very close to East Pashunk and mm. we spend a lot of time there. We can like walk there from our house. And in that area, Bing Bing is probably our favorite. Bing Bing, it right is there. so good. And so cool on the outside too. It is so cool. Yeah, it's it really, really good. It makes us feel hip. Yeah. It, <laughs> And I love the fact that you have only been here a short time and you are pronouncing the words better than most people who live there their oh, whole life. thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think there's people in Philadelphia that have ever called it Pashyunk. <laughs> I think they all say Pashyunk. So, I, you know, and if not, that'd thank be Kelsey you. correcting you probably. <laughs> yeah. she's, she's always been helping me along. So back up, Kelsey. That. Back yeah. up. <laughs> That's my home girl. I love her. I love so her. So do you say Bala Kinwood or Sinwood? <laughs> I, okay. I will say, you know, I learned how to pronounce that word. It's really funny. So Jenna was doing her traffic report and um, I see these words on the screen that did not look at all like Kenwood. And she kept saying Kenwood. I came up to her later. I was like, Jenna, what are you saying? And why are you saying it like that? And she's like, yeah, so I know it's spelled like this, but this is Bella Kenwood. I was like, wow, my mind is blown. That's why people around just call it Bella. Yeah. It's so much easier because yeah. you don't want to make, mess it up. See why? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how we got Kenwood, but I'll go with it. Whatever you guys, you like it. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> um, how about anything like, do you have any like causes you support? Anything that you put yourself behind or you feel strong? Yeah, so um, I am, um, I have always, 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 every city that I've lived in, I've always been a mentor. Um, I love young adults, I love high school kids, um, and that's who I kind of put my, um, I put my support behind. So um, I am a part of a program called Philadelphia Futures. Um, and so it's focused on uh, being a mentor to high school kids in the Philadelphia area, um, but there is a very strong focus on going to college. So every single mentor, we go through like a pretty rigorous um, process to get involved in the program, which I was like, am I applying for a job or what's happening? <laughs> Um, but they all make sure that the mentors are college educated and, um, throughout your time with your mentee, you make sure that you are always pushing, uh, college first and, um, which I think is super duper cool. So I started with my mentee when I first got here as a sophomore and she's a senior this year, which is wild and we were just we just met last week um i took her to lunch after after um school she's a senior so she gets out early and stuff you know and i took her to lunch and we were talking about the colleges that she wants to apply for and all these scholarships that she's going to go for and i'm not going to like blow up her spot but i am just so impressed with the young woman that she has become. And quite honestly, it had nothing to do with me. She was already a great young woman before I came around. Um, but just to be able to, to witness it against all odds for her. And she is just beyond amazing. Um, so I, I'm saying all that to say, um, I love mentoring young people. It makes me so happy just to see just to see a little bit of me in them and what mm -hmm. I've been able to do with my life. I grew up pretty poor. I mean, our, our childhood was, was, was rough. It was, it was hard. Um, and to be able to give a little bit of hope to some of these kids who are going through the same things that I was going through, um, it's, it's awesome. 
I and love I that. and I love it. I love it, and that that word hope. You yeah. know, to give them a little bit of hope because yeah. a lot of the students, especially in cities, don't have that hope sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's not as easy as if you're in a, a suburban area. Absolutely not. Definitely. So they need that, and they need somebody like uh, you. Exhaust me. <laughs> I don't know how the hell you do this, but you exhaust me. Getting up at two thirty in the morning, five days a week in the studio. They're told, you know, ten o'clock. You know, a one-year-old mentoring I date know. nights. Holy crap! I know. I'm also an adjunct professor. I so. was going to ask you, but I was say, don't you teach too? <laughs> yes, I'm like, I remember yes, I this. Do. I do. I'm not teaching this semester, um, but I have taught for the past three semesters at Cheney. I, um, I, I read that somewhere. Yeah. I was going to ask you that. I'm like, but yeah. you mention it. Yeah. So Holy I've heck. been. That's been really cool. That's been really great. Did you have to go out to Cheney to do yes. it? Yes. Yes. So, and Cheney's about 45 minutes from It's, about, it's an hour almost for you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a little bit far, um, which is why, because this is, um, this is like the first time I felt a little bit overwhelmed with everything, mm. especially with Harper being so little. Um, so, I'm taking this semester off. We'll see what happens next semester. But... Um, but yeah, that's that's been really good too. So I've been doing that for three semesters. And what do you teach? So um, I taught a bunch of different classes, but they're all journalism focused, which is really fun. Um, so I taught like an introduction to broadcast reporting class, which had to have been my favorite. And I think my students like think I'm such a geek because I get so <laughs> excited about. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And if you do this, then you can talk about this, and you can write to your video. And they're like, we get it. We write to your video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm, I'm so passionate. I just love it so much and, and having the opportunity to teach something that you love is, is it's a pretty cool and unique experience. That's great. Yeah, that's amazing. This is yeah. the first time you taught or did you teach prior to coming here? Yeah, so this is the first time being an actual like adjunct professor. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. I, I hated teaching. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was only teaching one course at a time. Okay? It was like a full time. It was my full time. Yeah. yeah, it's a little different. I think I could handle probably going back for one or something like that. Yeah. I just don't. I just don't know if I would be as like boisterous yeah. as I I'm used to be. I'm sure you would be great. Oh uh, yeah, for one class, <laughs> just one. Oh, <laughs> uh, so social media. If the if, you know somebody wants to follow you, where are they going to find you on social media? Yeah. So I'm Amanda PHL17. Pretty simple, I know. On Instagram and Twitter, and then Facebook, for some reason I couldn't change it to PHL17, whatever. It's just Amanda Van Allen. That's simple. Yeah. Real it's simple. Very, it's very Branding easy. yourself, I love it. Yes. Amanda PHL17. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> so Instagram, Twitter, or X now, or X, whatever. Uh, just, I can't keep up. Me mm -mm. either. No. I don't know. I, no. I, I have a Twitter account, but I never use it. Yeah, it will yeah. forever be Twitter for me. Yeah, <laughs> me too. It's, <laughs> You Just kidding? like when they change the name of ballparks, you know, and they're like, it is now, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's not. They did that to the, to the, whatever it is over in Camden. I don't know what they call it now. Mm -hmm. To me, it's always the Twitter center is what it started with. The Twitter center. So? I, I, Camden. I don't, I don't even what know what it is. is now. Yeah. So I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> Amanda, this has been amazing. I am so excited that I had this opportunity. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy I got to meet you. I, I, like I said, I had a, you know, I had to feel you out for a few years here and say, you know, should I? I no, <laughs> but I would love to have you back on again because there is so much of your story that I'm sure I would love to touch on, you yes. know, that you maybe want to share at a different time. Yeah. Um, especially growing up, you know, stuff like that, that, you know, that's important for people to know how people made it. Yeah. And you've made it. I have. You have. Which is a, a blessing for sure. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And, and, and don't ever forget that, you know, it was because of you that you made it. Thank you. It really was. I appreciate it. I know that. people will say, well, you know, God had a lot of, to do with that too, mm -hmm. but it was you. Yeah. You really put that in and, you know, I admire that. I admire what you do. I, I, I love watching you in the morning, the dynamics, uh, you know, between the four of you, especially with you and Kelsey too. Yeah. It's be you two are polar opposites sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, we are. And, but we it work. works. Yeah. It really works. <laughs> we work. <laughs> Oh my Thanks gosh. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you. And Got it. like I said, I wish we had more time. You know, I could talk for hours. You and I probably talk I for hours. You I know. know, we should. We will. We will. <laughs> we'll do this do again. We're going to do this again. I'll be back. <laughs> I will. Good. Thank you so much for joining me today. You got it. Anytime. I appreciate you. And everybody out there, if you are not following Amanda Van Allen, see, 
It's a hard one. Not a fun, yeah, now I've got tongue tied. <laughs> Amanda Van Allen, mm -hmm. look at that. On um, Instagram, it's Amanda PHL17. Yep. Amanda PHL17 on Twitter, Amanda Van Allen on Facebook. And every morning from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., Channel 17, PHL Morning Show. Make sure you tune in and watch her. Amanda, thanks once again. Oh my gosh, you got it. Anytime. And everybody else out there, this is Brick Carpenter on Usula Media. Thanks for joining us today. And remember, whatever it is you stand for, be a voice. Have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.